So. Hello guys and welcome to today's webinar. Today we will have a look at the new Hyperion tube and what's in the big case just laying in front of me right here. Good, so there will be a little bit tips and tricks during the webinar today. It will be around 30 minutes. And of course, we will also get to see the Hyperion and some good facts about this as well. I'm Jesper, I'm from Astera. And if you do have any questions during the webinar, my colleagues are waiting for you in the chat and are ready to answer all the questions you may have. Good. In front of me, I have the Hyperion case here, brand, brand new. So if we take the next slide, I want to talk about the case just itself as it lays just right here. It's actually a, a plastic case. And the ones uh, of you who have seen the Helios set or let's say the Titan tube uh, case looks a bit different from what you maybe know already. So it's a plastic case like this. We use airplane buckle straps, airplane buckles like this right here to hold the lid down when it's being transported. It comes in a total length in the case here of 2.3 meters. So yeah, some of you probably also ask yourselves, how do we even ship this in the future or when we get this? So I will have an answer for you also later. It comes in a weight of uh, total 29 kilograms and as you see here in the or on the top of the lid you have these four uh, I don't want to call it holes but I think you know what I mean when I say it like that let me just try to lift it here a little bit you see these just right down here makes it actually possible for you to stack them as well when placed on a pallet or just that they don't yeah, they stand safe when you place them on top of each other as you see in the presentation, you also get a feeling or you, yeah, you get a feeling with how it actually looks inside the case. And I think we should move on actually just trying to op open the case so we can have a look inside. This is what it's all about here today. So just like that, perfect. Actually a good uh, info as well. I will just need some help from my colleague just to remove the lid like that. Perfect. Just turn it around. Exactly. Just like that. I cheated a bit. I turned them on already before we started the webinar here, just so it could look nice and good for you here. Good. Actually, the Hyperions have been shipping for a couple of weeks only now, but we also uh, are all aware about the current situation. So if you would have any questions to shipping or maybe you want to rent something, uh, just uh, contact your local dealer or distributor. They will be able to answer all the questions you may have also due to the situation at the moment. Good. You see four tubes down here. If I lift one of the tubes, there is nothing underneath. There is only one reason for that. And also set again, the ones who already know the Titan tube case or the, uh, the Helios, uh, are aware that they have eight in the set. The Hyperion is a bit different. We have chosen only to have four in this set. And it's actually mostly because of the weight. So <clears throat> 29 kilograms, pretty okay. But since it's, it has this uh, total length of 2.3 meters, it can and will be very hard to move or arrange it yourself. That's why we also have some handles here at each end which makes it easier and of course recommended uh, from my side, it's also more safe to carry this case to people just to be able to remove it or move it safe and sound. That's actually why we have four tubes here. So today is the first time I also have uh, two different camera angles. So you can see me here in front, but uh, this camera right over here, uh, will give you a better overview what's actually in the case, also the accessories, and there is some new things what we are going through very soon. At, as you can see on the left side of uh, the screen, you, let's start with the left accessory first. If you have had a 
Titan tube with accessories, a Helios, you might be familiar with the stand, what you can actually screw the tube on and let it stand nice and easy on the floor. This is not included in the Hyperion set. And it's actually because the thread here at the, the both ends where you connect or screw in the stand here, the thread is simply just too vulnerable. So it's not strong enough, it will probably break and the tube will probably also be shaking because of the length. Yeah, so if we put that aside, then we actually have something else in the case instead. Maybe some of you know it, some of you might not. This little wing plate just here. So it's just a metal plate. I will also talk a little bit more about what this is doing a little bit later. These are included instead of the stands. So this is also a mounting possibility what you have if you want to mount it on a truss or on a C stand, for instance. So that's why we have chosen to put this in the set instead of the stands. Good. Baby pins like this. So you can mount a super clamp, put this, also use this with a C stand. It's also included eight of them, which actually fits to the eight holders that are also included to mount the tubes just like this. Two for each tube, simple and easy. I hope you see it very good here in the camera. I'm trying to just, so you see everything nice and easy. In this little room here, we do have the R clips, which actually locks the metal holder here so the tube doesn't fall out. Can be that you hang it in a height where it has to be installed safe. Then you use the R clip just to be sure that the tube doesn't fall out of the holder. In the little bag here, we also find the little eye bolt, just like that. Boom. And we'll also be uh, able to screw them in uh, at both ends of the tube. Mounting wise, I will also come back to these small things a little bit later. In the middle here, can be some of you already have seen it when we have had it with on some of the latest exhibitions before all this uh, happened, yeah, the current situation we all know about, is the data link. The data link might know uh, or might seem familiar or people might think, I know what it is. I will also come into that a little bit later because actually the Hyperion's charging wise, but also when you want to fix them with power supply for one week, for instance, then this also become useful. <clears throat> Good. The ones of you who also know the charging system in the Hyperion, oh, sorry, the Helios or the Titan case, is with the power box and you have the small uh, AC or the uh, DC connectors to just plug in the light and then they simply just charge in the case. We of course don't change the concept of charging in the case so we have and probably most of you also know the IEC here which will be connected to the four PSUs which you also have down in the case here simply just to charge the lights just like that. <clears throat> Good. Perfect. So let's move on. Talking about charging, what I just talk, uh, told you about right here is the IEC connector. And most of you probably also know it. I can try hold up so it's, everything is black, but I have a white background here like this. So you have an AC connector just at the end and power can in and out. So you also can charge multiple cases at the same time. Another idea, if you already maybe have a AX3 light drops, the spotlight, you can also charge multiple of uh, AX3 sets uh, at the same time with this one. This one goes in the case and you will also have here a power con cable to plug in your power socket like this. So you will have everything by hand to be able to charge the Hyperions as well. As I said, the charging is a little bit different from we know, but they do take a lot more power to actually charge. That's why we have uh, been making this solution. Another solution was simply just not possible. Taking this one, when the AC connectors 
are connected to the PSUs right here. We will be able to turn and plug this in right here. And voila, you have them charging in the case. I'm pretty sure everyone also knows how the charging works. So let's keep it simple and let's move on. Good. I brought a slide with here uh, just uh, in case I'm, not, I'm really sure that every one of you also know how to charge a sterile lights and how to treat it. I just want uh, to take a few tips and tricks with and also just a little bit information charging wise. So we just took off the lid and the lid should also uh, actually not be on top while charging because it can be overheating or creating heat. Batteries don't like uh, to be overheated. So please just let the lid away, put it on when charged. You can also see it here in the display when it's 100% charged. Put the lid on and then you can store it right on the shelf. The concept is the same as the Helios and Titan. Three hours charging time, not so much has changed there. Just in case you would ask anyways, only takes three hours also for this two meter long Hyperion tube to charge. <clears throat> Good. Talking a little bit about specifications, uh, we do get a lot of questions if something has changed and also so you are aware what this long Hyperion tube is uh, capable of and also what kind of specs uh, it has. What I have been writing up in the, the left corner, it is simply just a long Titan tube. So as we know, the Helios tube has eight pixels, the Titan has 16 pixels, and this has a total amount of 32 pixels, just like you see here. Actually, I shouldn't even be, be doing this. I'm too short anyways to handle big stuff like this, but 32 uh, pixels can be controlled individually. <clears throat> A very important thing uh, also when we launch, let's say the new Hyperion here, that the length is approximately two meters. You also see it's 2.031, not too much in details, but the diameter stays the same as the Titan and the Helios. So in case you should have Helios or Titan in stock, maybe you rent them sometimes and you actually uh, choose to buy this or can be, don't know then actually all the accessories will stay the same and will also fit the Hyperion just the same as the Titan and the Helios. Which means that we also didn't change anything with the thread at both ends. Everything fits, everything is compatible with each other, no need to buy extra accessory equipment, just use what you have in case you uh, came along with the Hyperion set without accessories and you have a Titan set with accessories, then everything fits together. Just very important for me to mention here, everything fits together, good. So actually the brightness, also talking about the lumens, is approximately double as bright as the Titan tube. <clears throat> so you will actually in total have an amount of 5,800 lumens coming out of this. Actually very, very bright, uh, especially uh, if people know the boost mode. Boost mode is the brightest, runs on a full charge, one hour, 45 minutes, and actually surprises me how bright it is, probably also because of my height can be, it overwhelms me in a way I didn't thought about before. So actually, <clears throat> I will also come to that, but brightness is approximately double as, uh, the bright or powerful as the Titan tube. We use again, like the Helios and the Titan, the same LEDs, what we have been making, the RGB mint amber, simply just to reach a high CRI and, and 96 uh, and above on the CRI index. So still the same nice white color nothing has changed in this direction as well. If you didn't already know, the Titan family, so the Helios, Titan and the Hyperion can also be wired. If you see on the right side, the AX1 pixel tube, which, which is not within the frame, I will actually have a webinar about uh, these four tubes uh, and compare them uh, next week, Tuesday. 
So if this is interesting for you, you can already register to this webinar now. Actually, the AX1 was the first tube, just a short uh, uh, info, was the first tube uh, from 2014, uh, what we have in the new AX series. Some people requested higher or better uh, white colors. That's why the Titan came out here in 2018 and then different lengths were required. Then we made the half meter, the Helios, and now we finally have the two meter version. And guys, I can tell you, I think the two meter version is the longest one we are going to have. I really don't believe we are going to make three, five, six, ten 10 meters tube. Just in case you would ask or was wondering, two meter, I can also only handle the two meter if it gets longer. It will be very hard for me especially. Perfect. I was just talking a little bit about the runtime, but I think it's a very important point. It actually runs the same as the Titan and the Helios. Just because it's double uh, the length doesn't mean that it runs double the, or has double up on the runtime as the Titan or the Helios. You can always set it here in the display from actually maximum, which we also call the boost mode. So from a full charge, it will run one hour, 45 minutes. And as you might know in the app, you have the runtime. You can also see it there. Exactly. Thank you, Michael. Also see it on the left side on the screen. You have the runtime where you can set it up to maximum 20 hours as well. I like to mention the little uh, IR remote. Just want to try to see if I maybe can show it here like this. Also seen in the presentation, you have the three suns. These do not refer to the brightness, but they actually refer to the runtime. So you have three levels of runtime. The, mini, the uh, smallest sun here is 12 hours. The middle one is actually eight hours. And then you have the biggest one, which is five hours. If you want the boost mode, you can set it in the display or you can change it to max in the app. Good. So <clears throat> I do uh, get the question often. That's why I brought it with and I still get it. So I just want to make clear the control methods, the three methods, what we have also uh, stays the same. So the little IR remote compatible with this, of course, the app, the most important controlling system part here uh, with our products, of course, also compatible and also with wireless DMX can be that you do most of your setups or gigs with wireless DMX, then it's still not a problem. Good. We do have some different tubes, which, which also requires different PSUs. Like, uh, so PSUs, me, uh, I mean uh, with uh, power single uh, unit supplies. This also actually has its own. So you have them here in the set to charge. And I also have here the single power unit supply can be that you are doing a gig where you just have a couple of tubes with, but you want to hardwire them to power, then you have the opportunity here actually to simply just plug it in and then it runs. The thing is, if you have a Titan set or let's say some Titan tubes with, and you take uh, some Hyperions as well, and you forget the single power unit supplies, then the Titan, the AX1, and of course the Helios Titan are the same, they will not work. So. If you really want to hardwire them or power them uh, or have them to fix power, you will need to remember this uh, single power unit supply. Yeah? So the Titan does not charge the Hyperion. It's very different because, because it also takes a lot more power actually to charge it. That's why we have made this separate power unit supply. Another thing is when you have this little single power unit supply. You also have an extension cable like this. Let's say you have the power socket in the corner and you want to extend the unit, the power unit supply. Just take it up like here. Then you would simply just plug it in and then you have five meters extra. So this is called the FP1 extension cable. Also works for the Hyperion here. Good. The other thing what you also see in this sheet is the power data cable. 
Some of you might already know it, but I still think it's pretty important. For instance, if you have a power box or exactly the data link right here, let me see if I can show again, then you can use, actually comes in five, 10 and 15 meters, and then you can fix install it in the roof, in the truss, depending on uh, what kind of gig, of course. But here you can fix a power station on the ground and simply just link. The special thing with this cable is that you have both power and data through the same cable. So you don't need to have a DMX cable running there, DMX power, DMX power, power. Everything runs through one and the same cable. It's a special cable, but very useful, and it's very easy to hide because you only have this one cable actually going to the light. Perfect. So, moving on to the data link. Also pretty new for me and for you as well. Maybe uh, we all have been meeting each other at the exhibition. It's a little bit special. Actually, you can see it as a small power box also written on the left side on the screen. I want to demonstrate. Either you can plug in a single unit power supply, what I just showed you, or with this instead, if you are familiar, let's say with the Titan tube, the power box, you can fix also this as a power station on the ground. The only thing what you need to do, it's a little bit special with this, we have the single power unit supply here. And then, I don't know if you can see it here, you have a power in right here. And then you would need to plug in four power supplies right here. And then you can actually use the link cables, the power data cable, the 5, 10, 15 meters, and then link directly up to the lights. The reason is still that the, the, the Hyperion requires so much power, so it was just impossible to make it with a, the power box, what you already know. That's why we had to make this solution, which actually you just feed it like, uh, with power individually and then link cables out to the lights. I hope it makes sense. Good. The next one <clears throat> is a little bit special. So this one can be used to have a power station to feed the, the Hyperions. But if you should have, let's say, Titans, Actually, we are going a little bit away from the Hyperions because this is only working with the Helios and the Titan tube. If you have a Titan tube set with eight tubes, you have the power box included in the set as well. You want to have this running on DMX. So the power box works as one universe and the first universe. You connect then four tubes to the power box and link to the lights, four tubes on first universe. Then with the other outputs, you simply just link here to, uh, to the data link, and then you suddenly have a second universe. So this goes out to you who actually uses the DMX a little bit more. So this is a small and nice solution to add another universe. You can also use this as a single universe without the power box. This was just one solution, but actually you can use this, just plug in here, connect the data, maybe you see the ethernet here as well. And here on the sides, you have DMX in and you have DMX out. Like, maybe like this? Yeah, perfect. So the DMX connectors are at each end. Good. Just wanted to tell you a little bit about how this works because it is a bit different, but everything plays together at the end anyway. So everyone is happy when it comes to a nice Gig. Good. <clears throat> Talking about fixing all the lights also with the uh, uh, power, let's say for one week, it's not a problem. You, do, you just uh, have to be very aware because batteries have to be treated right. I actually made or talked about this in a webinar uh, a week ago. So you can also find this on the webpage on astera-led.com and go to the menu uh, called Academy then you will also get to know more about uh, fixed installation because you will do need to have or do some settings in the app uh, if you want
actually fixed installation, we do not recommend it. The lights was never intended to fix install. And if you do have a project or something you are thinking about, my email will come at the end. And I will, of course, be able to help you if you do have a gig where you need to install them for two months and you want to be able or want to make sure actually the batteries are still working afterwards. That's the very important point here. <clears throat> Coming to grips and mounting, let me go back here to the wing plate. The wing plate, the four here that are included in the set. Actually, you see here, it's just a flat plate with some screws. What we want to do, or what's intended, it actually that you take a holder and screw onto it like this. What you might also see, let me see if I can show it here a little bit better. You see here, there are some spikes. This allows you to angle the little holder so you can create triangles or you can create uh, squares. So actually, just be creative. You can do basically everything with this little wing plate. Just have to turn them right when it comes to the end. So I'm gonna mount the holders right here. The wing plate is also made so everything is hanging a little bit more stable. So when we want to mount this one now, we just do like this here. And a good thing, not because also a question I get a lot is people just push in the wing plate. You can do that, the tube will not get damaged. Um, people probably would like to turn it just like, so you turn it like this, a little bit hard like this, then you like that, boom. Then it goes on very easy. Do not get any scratches, which some people may, may have been experiencing. But the, the right way is simply just to turn the light and simply just slide off like that. Instead of just pushing, this can help a lot. And it's just a good tip for you guys who maybe already are using this. So simply just turn it. It's a little bit hard when it's not mounted already. So we just turn it like that and like that. Boom. Good. This creates a more stable setup also when you hang the tube vertically, horizontal, uh, horizontal wise, then you have a more stable here with the wing plate instead of only mounting the little holder here. Of course, you can mount a holder on each end just with the baby pin holder just like that and simply just click it on just like that. Good. Of course, for the wing plate here, we also screw in a baby pin, which allows us actually to mount it on a C-stand, a cinema stand, or using a super clamp to mount it in a truss or something like that. So let me just take this off here first. A little bit hard when it's not mounted already. Boom, boom. Wait. Oh, that, 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 that. Okay. A little bit hardcore here. Good. I will just let it sit for a moment. Perfect. So coming to the little eye bolt, people probably want to hang the tubes as well, just going straight down. That is possible. No worry. We will just take this off here first. Let me remove the cable so I have a little bit more space like this. Just want to make sure that everyone sees. So the eye bolt thread right here will fit both ends. So you can hang them horizontally or like this vertically. So here we have the little screw, just like that. And there are two eye bolts for every and each tube. So when we take the next slide, oh, no, sorry, I, I just need one more thing right there. Sorry for that. Some of you might be familiar with this accessory right here. It's not something that I included in sets. It's something that actually comes separately this right here. This one we call cross plate. Cross plate actually is you mount wing plates like this. I also have a finished version down here. And the wing plates, of course, has the holders on top of it. So you have a constellation sort of like this. Just let me turn it a little bit. Boom. So this is actually building or you can make a four bank constellation. So having them hanging like this, and this here, the Spigo, allows you to mount a super clamp or actually also mounting it on a C-stand. 
So here you have the possibility, easy to make a four bank just with this one plate we call cross plate. Let's move on a little bit. I made some pictures here. Actually, the one on the left side is the cross plate with tubes. So you see how the four bank constellation actually looks like. And the one on the right side is simply just the wing plate we have here on the tube, which you can mount with a super clamp and also on a C stand. However, this is very important for me or for you, uh, everyone who likes safety uh, at all. <laughs> When we have mounted the little eyeball here in the top, we can hang it. From here is probably not a problem, but somebody or sometimes you might hang them over the heads of people. So here is the hanging point. But to make it actually the right way and the legal safety or safe way is clipping on here a holder at this end. And then on the holder, you have three holes just here in the bottom, the one in the middle is for the baby pin, and then the two on the side are for the eye bolt. And just doing like that. So what we want to do is screw in the eye bolt right here. And of course we cannot forget the little R clip to lock. This here, I don't know if you see it very good, just like this. So this here is actually the safety wire point, and this here will be the hanging point. So now you have the right constellation of hanging it safe and sound wherever you want. Different heights, doesn't matter. This is the right way and a very easy way to do it anyways. Good. Boom. Let's move on to the next slide, please. As you might know, we have some third part, uh, uh, party accessories from some different suppliers. For the Hyperion has already been made a snap grid. And I do have a little sample with me, me here today as well. And we want to fold it out. I'm sure every one of you know what a snap grid is, especially when you do or work with film. Just fold it out, also very huge here. And also the ones who know me, I'm not that high or tall, so this can be a challenge. Here you have the snap grid, simply just snap it on. And you suddenly have a 40 degree snap grid here for your tubes. Yes, two meter long. Yeah, let's fold it back. I think this accessory makes very, very good sense. And some of you also might know that from the US we have the Hydroflex also producing underwater housings for the Titan tubes. Not yet for the Hyperions, they simply just came out. No time for that yet. Good, next slide please. Now we have been talking about a lot of mounting, all the accessories, charging. I just also want to show you how an effect here can look like on a big, big tube. So let's try just handling this. I have this here on my phone, just doing like that, and boom. So actually, uh, sorry, uh, the, the space is a bit tight here to have a stand, so just want to show you, uh, to like, may, take me as a comparison, uh, I'm one meter 70, and then you have the tubes right here, two meters, that's very good and nice. And of course, it works just the same as the Titan. You just have a length of two meters. Yeah. Perfect. Nice. I don't want to go so much into details with effects. If you also want to learn something about the layer effects and the features, we actually had some webinars last week. These ones you can also go in and see on the website under Astera. Academy as well. Good. Let's take the next slide, Michael, please. Some of you might know it already, some not. Um, the price approximately 70% higher than the Titan tube. So if any doubt or you want to know some more, contact your local dealer or distributor. They will know everything and will also give you the right information, what you need 
right on prices, shipping, and so on. When we go to the next slide, we will actually see uh, the shipping. Uh, what I wanted to talk, because it is 2 meter 30 long, yeah? even though if you only are handling single units, 2 meter, I know for sure some countries are very different logistic-wise. So let's say Germany, we have a limit up to 180 centimeters or 1.8 meter. Then we need to special freight them. And it's very different. So my suggestion uh, or recommendation is that you simply just call your logistics company, ask them if they can transport a 2 meter, uh, 2.3 meter long uh, case. And there is always a solution to that. So if you have your own truck, easiest way, 100% but just call your forwarder, they will help you out with this as well. Good. We actually reached the end, going a little bit over time. I hope that's okay for you as well. I do hope you learned something new also. Um, and like every other webinar, we record this one. will be online, I think, tomorrow, where you can actually see it again if you need to. And I will suggest uh, we do have actually a Facebook group called Astera Users Group Official. Very important. All us from Astera are in there answering questions and you can ask questions and everyone is actually helping each other out, just answering, asking questions, all that. It's a great community and some things will also be launched sometimes before everyone else sees it. So join that group. I think it's a great place to be anyways. So if you still have some questions or yeah, maybe you want a better answer on the question can be, please write me an email, which is also displayed here at the left side on the screen. I will answer it as good and fast and as fast as I can. Guys, I want to thank you for watching this webinar and uh, wish you to stay healthy and safe out there and see you the next time.